So, hi everybody, this is Joe Maldonado. Welcome today. Um, we are here with Professor Patty Wallenberg and we're going to be talking about her upcoming class about how to see dark energies remotely and kind of banish them. So, um, uh, again, uh, this is Griffin's Claw School of Practical Magic and the Department Head of Divination, Professor Patty Wallenberg. Welcome, Patty. Patty? Okay. Patty? You got stuck. Oh, I did? Yes. Oh, yes. Welcome, Patty. You, you, you got stuck. Ah. <laughs> Here we Welcome go. Welcome to yet another exciting bit of Zoom. Maybe I should have done some clearing on the Zoom today. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? We're, we're having um, storm issues here, too. So, okay. We'll see what happened. That's probably what happened with, um, with my internet connection. You know, so apologies for that. If it gets really bad, I'll pause the recording, wait till it comes back, and then we'll keep going. So right. tell us, you are like ha, the queen <laughs> of remotely traveling um, to other places, finding out what's making things awry in other people's houses and, and, and studios and, and various locations and then kind of banishing them. So for those that were unable to see the other class on remote viewing, can you just tell everybody what remote viewing is to you? Okay, my definition is probably very different than what was done in the other class. Um, honestly, I didn't have a name for what I do. Um, it just sort of started happening. So I have been training with a space clearing teacher for I don't know, 25 years ago, do his workshops and things. And one of the things we, or I started doing was if you had a home or a workplace or something like that, an environment that you wanted to have cleared, I found that if you drew me a map of your home and a rough sketch, it didn't have to be anything fantastic. Just so I understood where the doors were, where the rooms were laid out. I then go in and I start from the street, even if you don't draw those things for me, everybody has a street, everybody has a driveway, a sidewalk, front door. So I actually kind of walk your house like I am walking into your front door. And then I also use a pendulum. It helps keep me out of my head. And it also allows me to ask a lot of questions when I'm working. And what I end up doing for people is getting rid of negative energies, patternings that show up in houses and I don't even need to go in them. Um, a lot of times I just clear and, and I'll work and I'll say, okay, I'm standing in your kitchen. Let's release all the energies out of your kitchen. Sometimes I see stuff. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I might tell you clean up your kitchen because your kitchen makes you fight because you have clutter everywhere, which they don't <laughs> like, but it does. Um, sometimes I may catch a piece of artwork. I may catch boundaries, barriers. I might pick up electromagnetics, say you have power lines or something. Sometimes I'll feel that kind of stuff as I'm walking around your property. But I sort of pretend that I'm there just using a simple sketch of what you've drawn on your house. Right. And you know, it's, I, I remember one of the first times that, um, I mean, I know we talked about it, one of the first times that I realized how really good you are at this. I was having issues with my dogs in my office and there was a lot of fighting going on. And you said to me, there's probably something in the office, you know, that that's making them a little bit awry. And sure enough, you remotely found yeah. items that I had in here that had, I just want to say darkness, you know, and mal intent attached to them. And, but you found them. It was very specific. It was under the printer. There was a drawer inside the drawer. There's a box inside <laughs> the box. There it is. Bye bye. And there yeah. it was. And I'm thinking, God, I don't even remember having that item yet. You were instinctly drawn to it. So I know there's a couple different things that I have here that people might say, well, and, and you mentioned patterning, you know, that might be in the way mm -hmm. of, of having a nice peaceful life. So right. for example, um, a pet that refuses to enter a room or a space in your house. And in my case, my pets that were fighting. So yeah. do you, do you tap into the, the animals or do you just go right to your location in that room? I will, you, I will normally look for the energy within the rooms. I don't necessarily want to know a lot of the details about your house. I prefer you don't tell me. Right. Um, 
I prefer to kind of come in and do my own work and then verify it with you when I'm done. So then you can kind of tell, sometimes I'll get people, I get a house that doesn't sell. Um, I get renters that come in and out every six months maybe. And then all of a sudden they've got a new one and they kind of leave the same kind of way. They just right. pack up one night and they're like, we're out of here. Um, and so I'm not necessarily in I'm not interested, but it makes my job harder the more I know. So I like to kind of just be like, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to sell my house and it's not selling. Or I'm having problems with renters. Or, okay, you're having problems with your animals, but I don't want to know what room. I kind of like to wander around your house remotely mm -hmm. and then come back to you and go, these are the things that I found. And then your floor map that I ask you to give to me helps me tell you where in your room that object is. Sometimes, like for Joe, I did hers because I had been in her house before. Yeah. So, but I was sitting home here in Georgia. And so, um, but otherwise, if I've never been in your home, the map will kind of tell me, and then I use my pendulum and I'll go, is it on this wall? And I'll think about a wall in your room. Is it in this wall? And I'll think about that wall. And then I'll ask where on the wall, a third of the way up, a quarter of the way up, the center of the wall. So I can kind of narrow with the pendulum, yes, no questions. Mm -hmm. and get a sense and sometimes I'll visually see things like Joe's piece it, it was a coin it was a, a metal in a box mm -hmm. so like a you know like a military metal mm -hmm. and, and it wanted some prominence it yes. wanted some some out and, there was and other actually that there. metal was um, a hand-me-down in my family that I had forgotten I had mm -hmm. from um, Napoleon so it was centuries old it was very torn and tattered and it wanted some recognition so after I realized what was happening, then I had it custom framed and it's hanging in a very prominent place right now. And he's very happy. He's with all the other relatives in the wall, like dancing and, you know, and waving at us. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that, that worked out really, really. Um, right. So there were two fold going on in your office that day. There was some yeah. stuff that you had tucked away that you forgot about that didn't yeah. come from the nicest of people. And so part of what we'll talk about in class on Saturday is about recognizing the things you bring in your house. Right. The energies of the things you bring in your house, what carries with them. Right. Um, because it may not always be your house. Um, it could be something you brought in or maybe something that someone gave you and you don't like that person or maybe they didn't like you very much. Right. Right. And I think, um, I know, I, I don't know about everybody else here on the call, but I love garage sales. I love estate sales. I love goodbyes, but attached with those objects is the energy of whoever had that object, you know, the energy of the environment. Is there something that you can kind of suggest to us to, you know, be on the alert for when you buy something like that, or even, even something brand new at like a Target, you know, or, or a store like that? Is there something we should be on the lookout for when we buy things like that? Well, I normally wait and see when I buy stuff. See, sometimes I get like a gut check. I get like a little hit in my belly mm -hmm. and then that alerts me to the fact that there's something going on with that piece whatever that piece is mm -hmm. um i like to buy a lot of art so that means somebody painted things that i bring into my home i usually like to meet my artist before i bring his or her stuff in my house because mm -hmm. then i get to meet that person and assess their energy before i bring home their artwork that totally makes sense to me. Absolutely. You know, they already have a sense of what the energy is that you're bringing in. And with every art piece that we create, we put our energy into it. So that, that's, that's sure. a sure thing, you know, for you know, me. Then hand-me-downs, you know, grandma died. Well, I didn't ever like grandma. She was a nasty old lady, but now I have her table <laughs> in my house. Right. But then all of a sudden things start going wrong in your house and you're kind of like, why is everyone fighting in the house? Why is there so much anger why is there so much yeah. stuff why is the piece no longer here anymore yeah. yeah and most people would never think a piece of furniture comes with an energy signature attached to it yep so, so sorry <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> I, know, I have it turned off <laughs> very powerful phone today yeah it's very powerful that and the storm and everything else so sorry about that exactly but you can you can certainly bring home things that you know you didn't want you inherit things that maybe you don't want someone gives you a gift yeah. even though i may not like that person i feel guilty you know it's your mother-in-law gave you some thoughts and every time you look at it you, you're angry about it or you yeah. dislike it 
And it creates, you then start to create an energy attached to that piece. So, you know, who, who is it? Marie Kondo, if you don't, it doesn't bring you joy, don't keep it. But it's really true um, in keeping things that you don't like, that bring up and stir up emotion for you. <laughs> okay, you broke up with every syllable. And then if someone's coming in and I will put their piece out, can you just repeat that again? My internet connection is unstable, so I don't know how everybody else heard you, but every single letter that you said was stretched out. Could you repeat that last phrase, please? No, because I don't know what I said now. So, okay. <laughs> but I was saying that if you have pieces or objects in your home, you should also have an affinity and a fondness for them. Um, because if you look at a piece that someone gave you that you dislike, you will constantly be adding your energy now to that object too. Yes. yes. You know, Absolutely. so, so it's kind of, kind of a mixed bag because you bring in energies when things come in, but you also add your own energies to things that come right. in. Right. And I think we, we already addressed this, but, um, I have a question. Can someone send bad energy from across the county? You can send bad energy any way you choose with the right amount of focus and intention and purpose. Yes. Um, it's, it's part of why we did, um, why we did that class the other day where we did the sigils and the house protection. Yes. Um, but you can also create, and we'll talk about this also in the class. Um, I create white light spaces around my home to kind of mitigate things that maybe shouldn't be come in. I, I kind of make an energetic ball and hope that all bad things go away. Yeah. So that it, a lot of it doesn't show up at my door if I can help it. Right. Right. So. And for those of you that were unable to uh, listen to that, both the classes on remote viewing and the class on sigils um, is recorded on our YouTube channel. So feel free to pop over there and you can listen to it. You'll know exactly what Patty's talking about. So you said that you see things. Um, and I know this, you know, some people see, some people hear, some people feel. So those are the clairs. Can you describe how you see things and you're not there? When, how do you then? see them? Do you see them in your head? Do you like, do you see colors? Yeah, I'll, I'll see objects. I'll see people. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a house. I did a house in Hawaii. It was for a friend of mine. Her son wanted to sell his house. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing the clearing to get the house sold, two things came up. There was a piece of art in his living room and a lot of African art has a lot of energy attached to it. Not mm -hmm. always on the positive. So I told him if he wants to sell his house, he needs to move that piece of art out of his house. I mean, I could literally see it and I described it to him. I mean, it was right there in my face. And then I asked him when I was finished, I said, who is the dark haired woman who's about 30? And he goes, and I described her a little bit further because I could see this, this person popping in and out while I was working. And he's like, that's my girlfriend. And I go, yeah, she don't want you to move. She don't want your house going. So her energy is overlaid on that whole house, interrupting the whole process of this house being sold. So it's, an, it's a, I had two things big show up and again it's in Hawaii I have no idea where it is I never asked even for an address he just sent me a picture of a floor plan of his house and wanted to know why it wasn't selling and I, so I find stuff like that other people yeah yeah I can't wait to um come in on your class on Saturday because I want to know like okay how do I do that I mean I can see things you know and on um, Mary Helen and, and I were you know we work tag teams on you know, finding bodies and dead people and missing people and stuff like that. But I've never worked off a floor plan before. And I think that's, that is fascinating to me that, you know, we're going to. The hardest part, because I've, I've had a friend of mine do it with me a couple of weeks ago. She had a house that um, her dad is selling a house in Florida. And it probably wasn't the best place to start because there were a couple of drug overdoses. There were some bad tenants. Yeah. Um, but as an education for her, we did them together so that I could step in and help her if she got in trouble. And I mean, the amount of stuff that she was getting for someone who just started, I usually like you to kind of work on things that aren't your own home because you're personally vested. Yeah. So we will be doing the class in which you do not work on your own home. Um, maybe we'll work on mine. Maybe I'll make up right. something else. I don't know. Have you run into spirits that with bad or just 
Hmm. I'll Could get this intent. Yeah. <laughs> and how does, how does a spirit seeing a spirit different than seeing a, 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 an energy? They're a shadow. They're cold. So sometimes, especially with that house I did with my friend, I got ice cold on a day when it was 85 degrees, even though I wasn't in the house. Mm -hmm. So I already knew that there was something there and I'll catch them as shadows. I'll catch them differently than I do when it's living people. They're almost like shadows. And sometimes they'll put up a barrier and I can't see past it. And I'll be like, oh, you're interesting. What are you creating? And what don't you want me to see? Mm -hmm. And then I start pushing at it and pushing at it and telling it that I want in and I want to see. So I'm somewhat kind of Jersey when I do my house clearings too, where I won't allow them to tell me no. And I will also banish them. I will tell them they are no longer wanted here. They need to move on. And how do you banish them? How do you banish a spirit? What do you, or I bad just, energy? I, I just tell it. You just tell you know, it. I kind of speak it. I send it some white light and I ask it to move. And a lot of times I'll use my hand and I'm like this, you need to go. So it's a physical that will travel also. Mm -hmm. I don't always have to do that. It's rare. I don't come across those super often. Um, and I usually get more of that kind of information when I do it in person. It's yeah. rare I get that much information on a floor plan, but sometimes I do if it's particularly mm -hmm. strong. That house was very strong. I wish you were here when we bought our house because we had a spirit. Um, would not budge. It took me a year to get him to go, but, and he pops in every once in a while, but now he's friendly. He's yeah. fine. But I was like, boy, if I had Patty that back then, <laughs> we bought this house, you know, she would have cleared him and Move on, dude. Get on your motorcycle and go. Get it on. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, if I don't find that they're an issue or a problem, I don't care that they stay. But things that bring about, you know, drug overdosing and death, and, and sometimes those contribute to emotions that catalyst throughout the rest of the house. Right, right. So you have to watch that kind of stuff. And then we also look for, like I said earlier, we look for patterns. So if you're buying a house and the last three owners got divorced and you're newlywed, you yeah. should call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do it for businesses. If you think about restaurants, when I first met the teacher who taught me the basics of all of this, he said, you all know the Italian restaurant at the corner of the street mm -hmm. and it closes in six months. And you're like, no, oh, my restaurant closed. New restaurant comes in. And you're like, whoop, whoop, new restaurant. Six months later, it closes. Yep. And so there's this, this inherent energy signature now happening in that building yeah. where the failure is almost to the day of, of six months. Mm -hmm. uh, divorces are constantly happening through the same house. Your marriage could be solid and rock solid, but there's an undercurrent of energy that almost nobody is aware of. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is most of us aren't even aware of the energy that shows up in our homes. We just go home. Why am I so tired in my home? Why don't I sleep at night? Um, why am I up? Why is the dog stand in the middle of the room and growl? Um, why are certain rooms I want to be in and other rooms I avoid and keep the door shut? So how does your energy move in? So not only do I come in and clear it, I also tried to make the energy move fully through your house so that you're comfortable everywhere in your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So someone was asking here, uh, what if the item was created with bad energy, but when I received it, I received it with great energy. Is it still important? They have my back. Also, my mom comes in. Okay. Oh, wait. No, sorry. That was another one. Is it still <laughs> important to know which artist or creator that created it? So. No, I mean, we can't always find that person. A lot of times I leave my stuff sit in the sun for a couple of days. I set it. I have a crystal altar behind me. I'll set a lot of stuff on my crystals and let my crystals do the work. You could do something as simple as a smudging. Um, a little bit of sage, Palo Santo, cedar, whatever kind of, you know, thing you like. A selenite wand works amazing. Yeah. You could do, if you're a Reiki person, you could use your hands. You can visualize it just being cleared. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to get around not meeting the person and if you like it, it must feel good because if it didn't really feel good, you wouldn't be drawn to it. So, so yeah. would you so say, say that a lot of it depends on creating your own quote toolbox, you know, yeah. what works for you, your own language, you know, what you understand, you know, and, and what, what means what to you and then putting it together? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we all have our favorite ways of working. Every one of us has ways of doing things. Um, I, everybody will do something different. Um, if you're a crystal person versus an energy healer versus someone who's just kind of new to things, mm -hmm. you'll have ways that kind of work for you. You'll read about it and go, how do I clear things? How do I get the energy off of things? Mm -hmm. How do I change? Um, it's kind of a growth thing and you'll become comfortable. You'll have your favorite two or three ways of going back and doing things. Now, is that how you developed your relationship with your pendulum? Because, I mean, anybody could do a pendulum, but I think you have to have a relationship, right? Yeah, you do. And it's funny. Um, I didn't do a lot of pendulum work until I started doing space clearing. So our teacher has us do it because you can ask questions. What's in this space? How long has it been in this space? Have I cleared this space? Um, and we use dowsing rods, too, in person um, to show you the flow of space. So I need to do that in a house on a map without dousing rods. So mm. I've become very comfortable with my pendulum with yes, no's, and fast answers. If I cleared all this, is there more here to do in this room? Did I catch everything? Is there something over here? Where in this room is something blocking us? So it's a constant dialogue. Yeah. And it takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. You're not going to get it in the first try. I've been working with the same pendulum for 25 years. Mm. I have my particular favorite one I like when I do clearing work, when I need clear messages. Mm. You need to be clear. You know, you need to ground, you need to relax, um, and you need to just practice. You need to work with it. Mm. Um, I just bought a book. It's, it's in my living room, but I'll bring it to class on Saturday. And it's like 50 different ways to use your pen, do those sorts of things. Mm. But, you know, you just want to keep, practicing you want to keep using it every day you want to start off really basic and really simple mm -hmm. and then you just keep working and my pendulum also is a time holder for me so when i'm clearing a space my pendulum will spin and when i'm done processing out the energies in the space my pendulum will stop and I will check with it when I'm done. Am I finished in this room? Do I need to go back and do something? So Is that something that you'll be going over with on Saturday and how to use that? Okay. I thought so. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just so asked. If you, you know, yeah. So if you do come to class on Saturday, if you would bring pen or pencil and paper, because we'll draw out house maps. We'll just practice a little. Okay. Um, and then if you have a pendulum and if you don't, you can make one or just, you know, find a little stone. Like a string, a string. Right? Yeah. Very, very simple, but enough that it will get you your yes or no's. I use a necklace a lot of times. Um, sometimes I need something and I, and I just pull off my necklace that I'm wearing. You could use your keys, yep. anything that gives you a little length and swing. Right. And um, um, we'll practice. I have a, a couple of comments. I know time is running out, but we have a couple of comments. I feel and see fur babies who have crossed. They let me know they have my back. Also, my mom comes in. Oh, so that was just a comment. Um, and nice. then we have another one. Have you run across an elemental? And how would you remove that? Probably. Elemental means different things to different people. Yeah. So if I'm, and you, if you wish to clarify the way you use elemental, elementals to me are earth energies. So they could be fairies, they could be gnomes, um, Native American magic sometimes to me are all kind of in the elemental field. And yes, I do. Um, I have run over gnomes who go and kind of guard somebody's front door. I have also gone and hmm. found when I went to someone's house, the whole property, um, when I was clearing it, I get, kept getting stabbed in the ankles. So the elementals, there were super, super small, all old Native American land. Um, very, very strange place. Yeah. So that was kind of weird. Um, I don't know. They, they do show up. So you do need to be aware of them. You need sometimes to understand what that house was built on. Yeah. What was there beforehand. The history of the, of the property. Yeah. yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. The, little, the little dude stabbing me in the ankles was great fun because, damn it, it hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, they felt like fire ant bites. And I kept looking going, what is biting me? Because I'm standing in the <laughs> basement. But there's nothing there. And then the, the dudes, there were a bunch of, I don't know, gnomes, trolls, whatever word you want to use, all yeah. laid out at somebody's front door. And I fell oh, over. Wow. I tripped. 
but she had requested protection and that's what showed up for her protection and oh, i said okay. no wonder why no one's coming to your house they're blocking the whole front door right 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 oh yeah so, we got lots of piles so mm -hmm. we have to be very careful about what kind of protection we're asking for you know i mean you never know who's going to show up you know i mean i'm fine with this yeah sometimes you do sometimes you need to be careful about who shows up right and how you ask it's not always a bad thing we all have an affinity for different spirits when we request help it right. could be angelic it could be uh, i'm a fairy person i want my fairies hanging out but you could right. be an angelic person you might work with that realm right um, right they're usually not bad but the problem is is then you know you turn around and now you want to sell your house yeah. yeah and then all of a sudden you're like well nobody wants to come to the front door uh-huh um, yeah there you go or you know and then i also find emotions create so i went and did a house for a realtor who couldn't get it to sell and i drove right past that house and i go well half the problem is no one sees the house i drove right past it and it turns out that while i was doing clearing work the man who laid the brickwork in the driveway was really angry that day and he was <laughs> so angry he created a wall Man. that when you were going to look for this house everyone just she goes i don't understand there's a big sign and everybody keeps driving right past this house so now his emotion so you had a contractor now come out and do work on your house yeah yeah that that's so now you've introduced another energy into your yep. home yeah so, um, someone yeah. says, I so use kind Florida. Of There's I, a whole lot of things that show up when you play. Perfect. Uh, I use Florida water, then putting my sign on it. So yes. I know a lot of people do. I don't use Florida water, but a lot of people do. So yeah. again, I think it's your, the attachment, right? And your belief. In, in it's what you're comfortable with. But yes, Florida water, I have heard of. I probably have some in the house that's very kind of New Orleans, sometimes Florida kind of yeah. it comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I find it a lot in New Orleans and, and those type of um, belief systems in that out of there. Absolutely. But, yeah. but of course, it, really it works. Yeah. You have to believe it works too. Yes. I mean, I could use, you know, I could use a pen and just be like, oh, this clears everything. Yes. If I believe it well enough, it will. Yes. Yes. Uh, someone said, how do you build a relationship with your pendulum, which we're addressing on Saturday? So stay tuned on Saturday for that answer. And we covered a little of that too. What's that? And we did cover a little bit of that. Yeah, we did. Practice, 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 practice. Um, also elementals, sacred lens. Thank you. That was a thank you. You're very welcome. With putting Joseph <laughs> upside I down. I love Joseph. To sell the house. <laughs> I love that. I did it. I did it. <laughs> Whatever. Just sell yeah. it. Yeah. Again, it's a belief system. Um, comes from yet another type of um, belief. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. And and honestly, you know, Joseph, isn't he an archangel or something along that kind the of thing? Saint, realm? yeah. He's yeah. a saint. So, you know, you're asking know. him to protect your house and then you're also asking him to help itself. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with doing that. Again, it's what you believe. It's how you want to do. Your intention. I mean, I, I, I suppose there's a difference with just sticking him upside down, you know, <laughs> to say, okay, they're saying just bury you. Okay, bury the little statue. And versus like communicating yeah. with, yeah. you know, this, this whole concept of who Joseph is and asking for his help, you know, rather well, than- I would assume if he's upside down, he's uncomfortable, which will help bring people- I don't understand. The house, you're supposed to unbury him once you sell the house. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that. So um, uh, I'm going to stop recording, um, but stay tuned everybody, because I'm going to ask everybody to unmic themselves and then you can talk to Patty directly. Patty, I want to thank you so much on behalf of Griffin's Claw. Oh, I can't wait to do class. It's going to be fun. It's a it's fun class. class. So much fun. Uh, it's this Saturday and that will be uh, available as a, a purchase recording as well. So I'm going to stop this.